with us now from CPAC, the founder and the chairman of the Faith and Freedom Coalition, Ralph Reed. Ralph, we really want to ask you about this HHS ruling because we know that you're really torn on it. But instead, <laughs> we're going to go to the review and outlook of the Wall Street Journal today, their, their main editorial. Uh, on Mitt Romney, conservatives don't trust Mr. Romney in part because he gives them so little reason to do so. Uh, should conservatives trust Mitt Romney? Well, I, I think, Joe, as you well know, this is this is a marathon. It's not a sprint, and and it can be a, it can be a bloody marathon. I mean, this is a very tough business to win a major party nomination, and Mitt Romney, given his more moderate pedigree. Uh, given the health care plan that he passed in Massachusetts, given that in the past he has been pro-choice and pro-gay rights, I think I understate the case to say that he has some work to do. Now the good news for Romney is that this is not his first time around the track. Remember, uh, Joe, that when he came to the podium that is just behind me right now, four years ago, he was welcomed as a conservative hero who had taken on John McCain from the right. So he's built some relationships. He won the Tea Party vote. He won the self-identified conservative vote. And he basically was within the margin of error on self-identified uh, evangelicals in Florida. Obviously, he had a tough night the other night. But one night does not a nomination make. Uh, you know, you, this is a long process. I mean, in 2000, when I was working for George W. Bush, you know, we came out of South Carolina with a head of steam and then lost Michigan three days later. Yeah. So I would just caution people not to overreact based on a single night's results, whether oh, it's that, pro Ralph, Romney or anti Romney. Come on, Ralph. Ralph but I know, would that's, say that's, that's that what, the, that's what we do. That's he's what got we a do, job Ralph. to do. We, we're, we we always look at the last election, and that's what we respond <laughs> to because we we have the the attention span of amoebas. If that Chuck Matt. Todd is here, of Matt's <laughs> Chuck Todd is here. Hey, Ralph, what is what does it say though about Mitt Romney that he's struggling? to beat Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich who didn't come in here, didn't come into this campaign with uh, a lot of money, a lot of organization, a lot of support, right. particularly Rick Santorum. He lost to somebody, you know, George W. Bush in 2000 lost to John McCain who had an organization, who had money. Uh, Rick Santorum didn't spend any money either uh, in Colorado. Right. Uh, uh, a little bit in Missouri. but. That was a total just sort of straw vote of conservatives, and they went dramatically to St. Paul. Well, you know, Chuck, you've covered this stuff for years, so, so you know that in 2008, Mike Huckabee spent a nickel in Georgia and beat John McCain. He probably spent a dime in Virginia and beat John McCain. What was that a sign of in 2008? It was a sign that John McCain, if he were to become the nominee, had a lot of work to do to excite, energize, and effectively court the uh, evangelical, pro-family, and conservative grassroots of the Republican Party. He ultimately did so. And by the way, on Election Day 08, John McCain got a higher percentage of the evangelical vote and a higher percentage of the self-identified conservative vote than George W. Bush did in 2000. So when Romney comes here, he's going to have to make a very forthright, full-throated ca case to these grassroots that when it comes to the issues of life and marriage and the issue that you were just alluding to, religious liberty, when it comes to lower taxes and limiting government, that he's not only going to check the boxes, but that he's going to fight for them. I personally think that this is a good process. When Obama and Hillary uh, in one of the toughest heavyweight matches we've ever seen in American politics went all the way to June before she conceded. That didn't make the ultimate Democratic nominee weaker. It made him stronger. And Obama was a much better candidate because he had to go 12 rounds with Hillary Clinton. All right. Mark Alfred. Hey, Ralph, uh, you've said a couple times you sort of somewhat abstractly what you think Romney needs to do. Be more specific. Is it is it showing passion and emotion? Is it talking about particular issues that he's not been emphasizing? What does he actually need to do, not just at CPAC, but for conservative voices around the country? Well, I, I, I'm generally hesitant to offer unsolicited advices to you know advice to campaigns because it's kind of worth what you pay for it. We're but. soliciting it. We're asking you, Ralph. Go ahead. All right, I'll, I'll <laughs> offer it to you vicariously to Romney. How about that? Look, yes. I I think this is just my view. 
I think that up until now, where he's, you know, either through the super PAC or through his own campaign or in the debates, I think he's done a very good job of developing sharp contrast with Gingrich and Santorum when he needed to, particularly on TV. But I don't think he's yet made the case for himself. The message, in my view, has been narrow cast on, I know how to create jobs, I've been in business, and I, and I know how the economy works. I think that's a good message for him. But campaigns are not just about biographies, uh, Mark. They're about agendas and they're about issues. And I think people need to see that Mitt Romney is not somebody who just knows how to make the trains run on time and can manage the federal government better than Barack Obama and knows how to create jobs. They want somebody who they believe has a vision for where the country should go in this 21st century in a comprehensive way with key issues that contrast him with Barack Obama and that he's going to fight for him and that he has the unique leadership ability to bring it about. Okay. Does citing the words of hymns do that for you? <laughs> Does what? Does reciting the words to great hymns, does that, does that do the trick or does he need to do more than that? I think he needs to do more than that, but, but I do think that, that if you look at the Mitt Romney of today, particularly post South Carolina and Florida, it's undeniable. He's a better candidate, he's a better debater, he's got a sharper message. I, I commend him for the other day, I think it was in Colorado, taking on Obama on the issue of religious liberty. I mean, one of the great ironies of this campaign is we went into this campaign saying it was all going to be about jobs. And what happened this week? The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decision on marriage in California and uh, the, the ham-handed decision by the Obama administration to deny religious liberty to Catholic and other religious institutions all over America. So there's a cultural subtext even to an election that is a referendum on the economic performance of the incumbent president, and that's an opening for Romney or any Republican nominee if they're smart enough to seize it. All right, Ralph Reed, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Always great to see you, and I'm sure we'll see you over at CPAC. Yeah, you bet, Joe. Good to be with you guys. All right, thanks. thanks. Chuck, Tom